In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to retrieve data from a single table. Now look at the Navigator panel. Currently, none of our databases is displayed in bold. That means none of these databases is selected for querying. So the first step to write a query to get data from a database is to select a database. The query that we'll write will be executed against that database. In this demo, we're going to use the SQL store database. So we type out use SQL on the line store. Now, use is a keyword in the SQL language, and that's the reason it's displayed in blue. Now, SQL is not a case-sensitive language, and that means we can use uppercase or lowercase characters. It doesn't really matter, but as a best practice, we should capitalize the SQL keywords and use lowercase characters for anything else. So now let's go ahead and execute this query. All right, look, the SQL store database is now displayed in bold. Now in MySQL Workbench, we can also select a database by double clicking that. So now I double clicked SQL invoicing and it's the current database. Now, if we run this query again, the SQL store database becomes selected. All right, now let's write our first query to retrieve all the customers in this database. So after the use statement, we're gonna use the select statement. Here's the basic syntax or basic structure of the select statement. We type out select. In front of that, we specify the columns that we want to retrieve. For example, we can retrieve the customer ID column as well as the first name column, or we can retrieve all columns using an asterisk. Now, after that, we use the from clause, and this is where we specify the table that we want to query. In this case, the customers table. So this is the simplest query to select all the customers in a given table. Now, whenever you have multiple SQL statements, you need to terminate each statement using a semicolon. So look, we have a red underline here that indicates an error. If you hover your mouse here, you can see this tooltip saying select is not valid at this position because we didn't terminate the first statement with a semicolon. Okay, now let's execute this query one more time. Once again, we can click on this button here or we can use a shortcut. So look at the query menu on the top. The first item is execute. Now here's the shortcut for this command. On Mac, it's shift, command, and enter. On Windows, it's gonna be different. Honestly, I'm not sure. So whatever it is, use that. So I'm gonna press shift, command, and enter. And here are all the customers in this table. So this select statement has two clauses, the select clause and the from clause. But there are other clauses that we can use to filter and sort data. For example, we can use the WHERE clause to filter the result and get the customer with ID 1. So we can write an expression like this, WHERE customer underline ID equals 1. Now when we execute this query, we'll only get the customer with ID 1. So this is the WHERE clause. We can also sort the data. So after WHERE, we use the ORDER BY clause. And here we specify the columns that we want to sort the result on. Let's say we want to sort these customers by their first name. So we type out first underline name. That is the name of one of the columns in this table, right? Now, if we execute this query, this order by it doesn't really have any impact because we only get one record in the result. So let me temporarily take out the where clause. To do that, we can put two hyphens in front of this line. Now this line is treated as a comment, which means the SQL engine is not going to execute this. Okay, so let's execute this query one more time. Now, all the customers that we get are sorted based on their first name. So that's the basic idea. Now, over the next few tutorials, you're going to learn more about each of these clauses in detail. But what you need to take away in this tutorial is that these three clauses, from, where, and order by, are optional. As you can see, in this example, I'm not using the WHERE clause. We can also comment out the ORDER BY clause. We can also comment out the FROM clause. So instead of selecting all the columns in a given table, we can select some values like 1 and 2. Now, if we execute this query one more time, in the result, we get something like this. Two columns called 1 and 2, and in these columns, we have these values. So all these clauses are optional, but in the real world, we quite often use all of them. Now, what you need to understand here is that the order of these clauses matters. So we always have select first, then we have from, then where, and finally order by. 
we cannot change the order of these clauses. Otherwise, we get a syntax error, which basically means the syntax or the grammar or the structure of our SQL statement is incorrect. So it can't be executed. And one last thing before we finish this tutorial. In this example, you can see I've listed all these clauses on a new line. Now, technically, you don't have to do this because line breaks, white spaces, and tabs are ignored when executing SQL statements. So we could come back here and put from in front of select. So select star from customers all in one line. And that's perfectly fine for simple queries. But as your queries get more complex, it's better to put each clause on a new line. So that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll explore the select clause in detail.